Welcome to our Play Well podcast. My name is Sherry Morgan and I am the Director of Projects at Play Scotland, the national organisation for play. Today our Play Pedagogy Officer, Fiona Kirkland, speaks to Pete Morehouse and Yvonne Young about woodworking in early years and beyond. Pete is a leading authority on woodwork in early years education and has written several books and journal articles. His work in schools is centred around nurturing children's creativity. Yvonne is an early years officer with West Lothian Council and her enthusiasm for woodwork has since sparked an initiative to offer woodworking opportunities within primary one classes. I hope you enjoy their conversation. Hi Pete and Yvonne, thank you for coming on our podcast today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you both with us. Can I just ask you briefly, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what play means to you. Yvonne, would you like to go first? Hi, I'm Yvonne. I'm an early years officer with West Lothian Council. I'm in my final year of the BH Strathclyde University and my woodworking journey began whilst I was completing the Froebel and Childhood Practice course with Edinburgh University three years ago. Great, thank you. Um, so Pete, can I ask you to introduce yourself and tell us a wee bit about what play means for you? Uh, yes, uh, I, I've been working in early childhood education for over 25 years now as an artist educator, so very much with that sort of wide role of encouraging creativity, really, with a, with a multitude of different media. And wood has just been one of the media that we've used over the year, which has been you know, over the years, which is particularly yeah, pr- profound, gives a profound experience to children. Um, I also do a lot of writing and research at Bristol University. I do a lot of training for different organisations. Um, and in terms of play, I, I feel that, you know, children learn most effectively through play. You know, that they, you know, they get those opportunities to rework their experiences through play, to explore and investigate as they make sense of the, the world around them. So, you know, play really provides the natural conditions through which children can really flourish, you know, particularly and find their voice, you know, as they collaborate, negotiate and, you know, express themselves really. So, I mean, I also, I'm a passionate Frobelian and a Frobel tutor. And of course, Frobel was, you know, passionate about play um, and experiential learning and, and having a meaningful connection with nature as well. Lovely. You wouldn't get any, you won't get any um, disagreement from Yvonne and I because we're all all Frobelians here today, which is lovely. <laughs> um, so if you want to just continue and tell us a bit about what you think the benefits of children being able to work with wood and real tools are, Pete, please. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a tough question because the, the, the benefits just run so deep. Um, I mean... It, you know, when we think about holistic learning, you know, woodwork really is a truly holistic way. I mean, it's weaving in all areas of the le- you know of learning and development, and it's really pr- provides you know just a really rich medium with which children can flourish. I mean, you know, I mean, it incorporates everything. You know, if you just think about physical development. You know, you're thinking about that hand-eye coordination. You're thinking about you know just the breadth of difference. You know, sk- you know physical skills that they're you know utilizing with that. The, the fine motor skills, hand-eye coordination, the gross motor skills, the core body strength. You know, it's endless. You know, we could go through each of the curriculum areas, really, just looking at all of the different ways. But I mean, if I was to highlight the two areas that I think are most significant, I would say firstly it's that personal development um, is, for me, is very much at the heart of it. And it, it's astonishing, you know, whatever age that children have their first experience of woodwork, whether it's, you know, three years old or 11 years old, it's just they feel so, you know, trusted by being given, you know, real tools to use that that's, you know, that's, you know, they're feeling valued when they're, they're you know, with that sense of responsibility. And they really respond to that. And it's, it's quite empowering, really. Um, so that's very special. And then I guess, you know, with woodwork, you are learning a, a whole bunch of new skills. So it's just, you know, we all feel great about ourselves when we, you know, when we learn a new skill, you know, that builds our confidence and self-esteem. And that's exactly the same for the children as they learn to master the technique of using the hammer or the screwdriver. And then, you know, woodwork necessitates a higher level of focus and concentration. You just can't do it. You know, you have to be sort of focused and in the zone. Physic, you know, physically with operating the tools, 
but also woodworks are pretty you know wood's a pretty awkward material to you know to to work with you know it throws up a lot of problems so it really engages children you know they have to use their sort of higher order thinking skills to constantly be problem solving so that sort of combination of that sort of physical focus and the, the and the cognitive concentration just gives a really sustained engagement which i think is quite ex quite special really and you know once children are quite familiar you know they've had repeated times of doing woodwork the length of sustained engagement is extraordinary um really extraordinary i mean you know three four year olds spending the entire morning or the entire afternoon just tinkering at the woodwork bench is you know is very special and i guess you know the last thing about the personal development is that sense of agency you know, when you're putting your ideas into action, that's really empowering. I think it, it's you know that really builds that sort of can-do spirit, which is very much at the at the centre. And you know, and I guess the the other big element in terms of curriculum is children developing their creative and critical thinking skills is just a extraordinarily you know not only in terms of you know, using their imagination in terms of what they want to create, but particularly, you know, running into problems, analyzing the problems, having to come up with different creative solutions. It's just, it's so rich around that. It's extraordinary. And I guess, you know, the Chick Sent Me High talks about flow when children are really engaged in those sort of creative activities. And I think that's exactly, I think you'd agree with that, Yvonne. You know, they just get absorbed. And we know that that is a state which is really good for children's well being. You know, it's, I, you know, creativity is nourishment for the soul, and that's I think you know you know great byproduct. So you know I always say that with woodwork, it's not about what children make; it's all about what's being made inside the child. Is you know very much at the heart of it. Thank you. What a great answer, Avon. Is there anything you would like to add about the wood and the real tools? Hundred percent agree with Pete. I found that the benefits are endless. Um, in my experience, working with working with the children. That offers them freedom with responsibility, opportunities to engage and explore with the tools, problem solve, create, design, make their inner thoughts outer come to life through the medium of wood. It's an unhurried approach that offers them a sense of ownership and pride and trust in their own capabilities as decision makers and inventors. It boosts their self esteem, supports their self regulation. It just offers so many possibilities to extend their learning through meaningful conversations and I've found that it almost calms children. It's definitely slow pedagogy at its finest. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. It always amazes me when I come over to West Lothian, you know, to see your, your woodworking stations. Interestingly enough, just moving on to my next question. So I've been to quite a lot of other schools who um, have got woodworking, they've invested in the sort of woodworking areas. And they've said to me, where do we start, you know? So what is our advice, particularly, I think, more in primary schools, you know, because one of the, the, the schools I was in, in Glasgow said, it's like, we've got this, but and I was like, I know the very person to speak to. <laughs> so I'm going, would you have any tips at all? I think it's really easy. Give it a try. I, I would say start small, but think big. Um, for me, I believe that every day could be a woodworking day. And I know that the children in my settings would agree it's such a rich, wonderful experience that offers the children an opportunity to explore risky play creatively, safely and in a, in a supervised, manageable way and you won't look back. I'd start with one tool at a time and with balsa wood, which is very soft and it's easy for the children to manipulate and if possible, organise your woodwork area and use um, tubs with lids and photographs so the children knew where to return things to. I created a child-friendly risk assessment with our children and then we discussed our safety routines before and while at the bench. Then um, I would suggest looking for community support and from local companies or colleges that could donate wood off cups. And there might be parents or grandparents or staff with knowledge and skills to share too. Pete, you are an expert here. You know, we bow to your knowledge. Uh, <laughs> obviously... <laughs> You've got your online training course as well, and obviously your woodworking book. Um, that you know, obviously that probably would be a good place to start. You know, for teachers to have a look at. But is there any other advice that you would would give? Well, I mean, I, I guess you know, really with wood, there is quite a lot to know. Um, you know, it, it is knowing about you know what are the most appropriate tools to use. You know, what the children find the easiest to operate. What are the best types of wood to use. 
And then, you know, just thinking about what's the most effective way to set up a woodwork area, you know, what's the best, you know, what are the different ways in which you can manage provision, you know, what are the key sort of health and safety measures we put in place, you know. So in some sense, there is quite a lot to think about. And also, it's really important to think very carefully about progression with woodwork because you don't want to be sort of like throwing children in the deep end. You know, it's it's a very, you know, as Yvonne talked about, a slow pedagogy. It's literally, you know, getting comfortable with one thing and then when children are ready, you know, building on to the next thing. So they're already always building on their previous experiences. So within, you know, so, so saying that, you know, the, uh, many, many teachers have very little experience these days of actually working with tools themselves. So it can be a bit unfair to expect them to feel confident to you know to get woodwork going. I mean, a lot of teachers feel very nervous. You know, just the thought of some of their children in their class holding a hammer or a saw is you know is you know they could all imagine one child you know wielding you know the saw on the playground. It's not a good look, you know. So. You know, and it's um, you know, a lot, lot of people have embraced it. You know, very quickly feel reassured. But you know, we do have to acknowledge that a lot of people, are, you know, it's an area that people don't feel confident with. I mean, back in the day, it used to be part of teacher training, so it really was something that you know that people were much more comfortable with. But that doesn't happen anymore. So I think some training is really useful. Um, just so you can really gain that confidence. So, you know, ideally sort of in-person hands-on training is absolutely brilliant because you can, you know, get your confidence with working with the different tools, see what it would actually feel like for a child. Um, alternatives is the, the online training course, which is just an easy way for people to access. Um, and then I give instructions how, how a staff group can organize their own hands-on session before they introduce it to the children. Um, and then there's the the book, you know, it's quite a good teacher's manual learning through woodwork published by Routledge Show. And my website has actually got lots of information on it as well. So I've tried to put as much there to try and make it as easy as possible for people. But I think it is, it does make a big difference, you know, that once you've gone through it, it's just, you know, having the, the, you know, the exact right tools. I mean, we've spent 25 years refining, you know, just observing children and seeing what they find easiest to use. So that makes a massive difference. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it is really useful, if possible, to, to access some form of training. It, 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 is, it, is, it is a good starting point. I think that's interesting, isn't it? Because I think, obviously, you've done the hard work, you know, so... I suppose it's a case of not somebody going up to sort of being q and just picking up a load of tools and taking them back to the school. Like, you know, it's it's good that so it would be probably very good for people to obviously to read your book and and um, yeah. look at your online resources as well would be good. Yeah, and absolutely, and, and, and clearly, you know, woodwork looks very different when you if you're doing it in a nursery setting or you know kindergarten or you know as you're moving up through the different primary years. You know, we've got obviously got different staff ratios. Class, class management starts to look a little bit different. So it's, you know, have, having some, you know, some, some you know, really thinking about how it works in each school year. I mean, the ideal scenario is where this is firmly established right across the school. So each school year, they're just bre building on the previous learning, you know, so that, 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 you know, that sort of progression works very, very smoothly. But often when schools are starting, they want to suddenly start it, you know, in year four, for example, and that's not going to look that different than if you're starting in, in in nursery. Really, it's just that simple introduction to those hand tools and things. So yeah, there's a lot to think about. Really, you touched on earlier on about the adult role in obviously facilitating woodwork in class. How would you encourage adults to feel comfortable about with children using real tools? I, as I say, I mean a lot a lot of teachers haven't had that much experience. So you know, getting some hands on. Just having, you know, you know, having, having the staff team, you know, get the tools, get the woodwork, have their woodwork bench, and just experience working with wood is really important, you know, because you just, you know, there's some, so there's, you know, some people are unfamiliar that, you know, wood needs to be held in a vice before you, you know, you start to, so, you know, the very basics, you know, that we, we need to go through. But also, it's a great opportunity to have some fun and just to see how, you know, how creative you can be with working with wood. So, you know, and our role as, as, you know, in supporting children's woodwork, clearly the first stage is that safe introduction to the tools in their competence with working with the tools, but also 
um, that's the time to introduce the health and safety as well. And, you know, to effectively introduce health and safety, it needs to be a slow dialogue with the children. You know, you can't just talk to the whole class and say, this is going to be our rules about woodwork, because that's not, you know, how, you know, that, you know, it has to be about developing understanding in children. So, you know, I should be able to go to any of the children and say, could you tell me why you're wearing safety glasses? And they know exactly, and they're not wearing them because the teachers told them to, they're wearing them because they understand that they're protecting themselves um, from eye injury. So, uh, you know, that slow introduction is very, very important. And then, you know, gradually children can work much more independently, very quickly. You know, we're only using simple hand tools, you know, so, um, uh, you know, apart from the soaring, which with the younger children, we always do on a one-to-one -one basis, um, just more, actually, it's not so dangerous for the child themselves, but it's more to protect in case any other children came to watch from in front of the saw, which, you know, isn't an unlikely scenario. So we just need to be quite vigilant about that. Um, but, you know, and I think that the other main role that we have is, is at times children are going to run into problems, you know, and get a little bit frustrated, a little bit difficult. Sometimes they might need someone to just to take turns with a particularly awkward nail to get into the wood or, you know, to problem solve around an issue. So, you know, we can get involved with those sort of sustained shared thinking, open-ended questions to help them come up with different solutions to the problem. And essentially, you know, we're there to, you know, to help them, you know, retain their engagement and their flow when it, at times when it gets a little, a little tricky. What about yourself, Yvonne? I know obviously you've been doing it in your own nursery. What's your role there? Completely agree with Pete. I think first and foremost, all staff should test and experiment using the tools before they introduce it to the children so that that maintains a level of safety and for the children to feel safe at the bench with you. Um, I know my team were really anxious and the bench sat idle out of fear, but it just takes time for staff confidence to grow. And when they see just how confident the children are, their mindsets will soon change. Um, it just reminds me of Bron from Brenner, who believed that a child's experience are, a child's experiences are influenced by everything in their immediate environment, and therefore the adult role and reactions are paramount for for the success or failure of any woodworking experience. Equally, Fisher invites us as practitioners to consider our body language, our eye contact, and our tone of voice during interactions. So, trying not to say, "Well, be careful," you know, obviously step in when required, but give the children time. Just a quick question, do you do, you know, whatever you think about your risk assessment, then do you include the children in the risk assessments? Yes, yeah, so we created that together using our wellbeing characters. So they're aware of, it's good, isn't it, to make them aware of what the risks actually are, because I suppose it's, it helps them understand it, you know, rather than just a set of rules. If they always think children, if you if you involve them with making up those rules, isn't it? It's just, a, it's, it just helps them understand why the rules are in place in the first place. They also tell uh, peers, now remember, keep say, be responsible with that song. They can use that language at home as well, so parents, parents know too. Just whatever we're thinking about parents as well, so how do you get um, your parents on board with what like, parents might sort of say sort of risky or challenging activities? You know, obviously, I know, I remember when I was at school making my mum a little, I think it was like, a spice rack or something when I went to high school. <laughs> so how do you, how do you sort of like, so I know obviously parents are maybe going to get some lovely things out of it, but you know, how do you sort of bring parents on board? For me, I, f I feel it's about doing your research, having your rationale for introducing woodwork is key. Um, I was fortunate, I was one of 20 practitioners that um, completed his online uh, training course. Um, but I'd created a sway for my community members to introduce our wonderful woodworking project and it was to seek their views before the project initially started and yes, some were anxious but most were excited and seeing their children's experiences through their online learning platforms and when their woodwork designs go home it just boosts their confidence, their trust, their pride in their, their child's capabilities I think it's important to keep them informed and included, invite them to donate loose parts or join you in woodworking experiences, all helps to reassure them. And today we've had no accidents, just successes. I mean, you see that it's such a myth that it's really a dangerous activity. You know, I mean, it's, 
you know, I mean, we're not going to eliminate all accidents. I mean, that would be impossible, you know, but, you know, the types of accidents that happen with woodwork, you know, just every, you know, very rarely a child might get a tiny nick from just handling the saw. You know, it's a tiny little nick, you know, it's not like they're, they're running across the playground and they take a huge slab of skin off their knee, you know, it's, it, you know, and everybody at some stage is going to thumb their thumb a little bit. You know, we will have the occasional bruised finger or thumb, but you know, these are low level injuries. It's not like children are walking along pavements with cars going along at 30 miles an hour or, you know, falling out of high equipment or things, you know. So, you know, we need to have a common sense attitude to it. You know, and the benefits absolutely justify, you know, the, the, the tiny amount of risk. But, you know, I mean, I've been doing woodwork now for 25 years with, with no serious accidents. I work very closely with a colleague in Japan. She's been doing woodwork for nearly 40 years now. She's had no serious accidents, you know, and children's you know, the behavior at the workbench is often absolutely exemplary. You know, the self-regulation there is just extraordinary. And particularly with children who typically find it quite hard to focus and concentrate ordinarily within the classroom or perhaps a little bit more disruptive, usually suddenly at the workbench, they're captivated. You know, it's actually, it's, it's captured their curiosity, drawn in their interest. And suddenly a lot of the teachers will be feeding back that this is actually being an experience which has just unlocked their learning. You know, they've just absolutely flourished there and they've never seen, you know, that particular child spend an hour doing anything before and they've been completely engaged. So, you know, a lot of schools across the, the country will, you know, invest in their woodwork equipment, particularly because they know it's good in, in, you know, in engaging some children who find it harder, you know, to, to focus. So, yeah, quite special in that way. It definitely is, you know, from what I've seen over in West Lillian, it's really, it's really quite amazing, you know, like that, that whole creativity and, and not really a pro probably even just for early years, you know, I think it would be beneficial for any, you know, any child in any, because obviously, as you were saying, Pete, you know, what they can do develops each, you know, each year, really. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, you know, across the UK, there's actually more woodwork happening in nursery schools than there is further up. And it's almost a lot of the primaries are now becoming a little embarrassed that they're not actually <laughs> offering this continuation. You know, it's um, so there are more and more primaries, uh, you know, embedding the, you know, embedding it right the way up to, to year six, which is fantastic. And you can just imagine you know, what that progression really looks like in a school. And, you know, by the time they're in year six, they'll be designing and making, you know, go-karts with steering mechanisms. I mean, it's just extraordinary. And it's, it's you know, I, I really believe it. It's so important that children are getting hands-on experiences in, in education. You know, we're so removed from making in general. You know, we live in such a, you know, consumeristic society, really. Um, so, you know, the skills of working with our hands are, in a, you know, a life skill, aren't they? You know, so many people need to work with their hands in, in future, you know, in, in, in a multitude of different jobs. Um, or, you know, just from, you know, enjoying crafts activities or, you know, doing a bit of DIY at home. You know, we need to learn the skills of making and repairing as opposed to consuming and disposing, you know, in terms of, you know, having a more sustainable approach, really. So... I think it's it is really important, and I think it's a very inequitable education system if it's just a few lucky children whose parents pass on these skills at home. You know, all children should have access to this experience. So basically, if I'm looking for a new shelf to get put up, I'm looking for a five year old. Then one a five year. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean that's the thing is, you know, I know so many schools now that have actually started making a lot more of the fabric within the schools, whether they're making their own mud kitchens, making their own workbenches, making their own playhouses, putting shelves up, because, you know, the amount it costs to buy this equipment from a catalogue, you know, what a great learning opportunity. You can buy all that in terms of the wood and make it yourselves. I mean, it's that's just yeah, empowering for, for any year group, isn't it, really, to, to be involved in that, you know, real, authentic, you know, learning, making those sort of those frobal with talk, making those real connections with with life. That was wonderful. What a fantastic conversation we've had today. I really, I really, really enjoyed that. And I'm sure listeners will really enjoy it too. Um, so thank you very much, Pete and Yvonne. Is there anything else you would like to add at all? I was just going to say one more thing. It was something, obviously, in my previous setting, we obviously would worked in ELC and we also would worked primary one too and our child said to me there 
um, Mrs Young, I used to love woodworking in the nursery and now I love it in P1. Oh, that's a lovely thing to hear. That reminds me, there was someone not long back who shared on, uh, on Twitter an image of one of their children, you know, sawing a piece of wood and overheard at the woodwork bench today, when I grow up, I want to do this all the time. <laughs> Happy customer. But, you know, it's, you, to be honest, it's, it is a really popular activity. And this is really across both genders. The, the girls enjoy it just as much as the boys. It, it, really, it really is for everybody. So it's really important that we make it available and challenge some of the stereotypes because it is still perceived to be a bit more of a male activity i think you know a lot of the images that children will see in books or people in the community will be more men working with tools so in terms of equal opportunities it's really important that we really proactively make sure it's uh, all encompassing but it is incredibly popular and that brings with it its own problems Firstly, that they can get through a, a lot of wood. You know, they've got a wonderful opportunity, you know, ability to join quite a lot of bits together quite quickly. So we're always on the search for more offcuts and bits and pieces and getting parents to bring in more. So, um, and then it's also just managing, you know, because it's quite a popular activity, you know, just managing taking turns because obviously you can't have everybody doing woodwork at the same time. So that's, uh, it brings it brings some challenges as well as the uh, as the joys. <laughs> <laughs> I think certainly it sounds as though the challenges certainly are outweighed by the definitely the benefits of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for, for joining us today. As said, I think I'm sure our listeners will be absolutely fascinated about your wonderful woodworking journeys. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this podcast. To find out more about introducing woodwork in your setting, see the episode information. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on your preferred app. To find out more about Play Scotland, follow us on Twitter at Play Scotland and visit our website at playscotland.org.